We are in Reno, Nevada, and I'm checking in with my territory manager, Matt, and he is he has got a few projects for us to do today. Uh, he told me he's got some pigeon work he needs to look at, some beavers he needs to look at, and a gopher job he needs to look at. So we're gonna go out with him and help him kind of figure these jobs out today and figure out what we need to do and get him going. Yeah, it's always good to have Michael around. Sometimes uh, we get our bang our heads against the wall and figure out how to do stuff ourselves, but. Once yeah, so they make while. these things called trimmers, and you go, <laughs> and and it's all the same, makes it all the same length. Oh then wait, you're not talking about that. Yeah, then I don't have, then I can't save food. <laughs> have snacks for later. <laughs> So do you want to explain to people like what the first call was that you got like from this business regarding pigeons? As long as we don't show the name of the, of no, the, I of the shopping center. Yeah. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> we don't want to publicly humiliate or uh, show the name of the shopping center, but the shopping center had some problems and some people um, got salmonella and so the Department of Health was called in, the Nevada Department of Health, and there's a lot of circumstantial evidence that the salmonella originated out here. The pigeons are roosting on top of these columns here, and then over here, the pigeons are sitting on this beam right here. And when they poop down, people walk in and they track the bacteria inside with them and so there was never any real proof but there was enough circumstantial evidence that this shopping center had to put a plan of action into place that would stop the pigeons from pooping in such a manner that people could track it inside the stores what we are going to do is what's called exclusion and that is we are going to exclude the pigeons from being able to perch on these surfaces where they can poop in the line of traffic for customers. But this is like a normal thing. Like I didn't this realize- This is a very normal thing. As a matter of fact- I didn't realize this was even a thing. It's a as a matter of fact, we did a really, really big project in 2012. And what was happening there is the pigeons were pooping in front of the hospital and people were tracking that poop all the way up to the third floor. Patients were being kept with autoimmune deficiency problems. And so people were getting sick. And at that time, it was a different bacteria. I forget the name of the bacteria, but the hospital traced it back to the pigeons and people walking through the pigeon poop into the hospital, up the elevator, onto the third floor. And people were so sensitive to bacteria on that floor that just the tiniest bit, they were getting sick from it. So this is a very common problem. And this is why wildlife control operators do a lot of pigeon work. We do pigeon removal work, we do pigeon control, and we do pigeon exclusion. By the way, I have answers for every single question. Yeah, so pigeon spikes uh, are to try to move the animal away from the edge. And sometimes they work, most of the time they don't. But we don't like to use pigeon spikes, but we will use pigeon spikes when a customer forces us to. Do you believe me? Yeah. Like, I think that's where it is. You don't believe me. No, I believe you. Well, if you believe it, then you can't achieve it. Yeah, I know. So whatever your good. mind can believe, whatever your mind can conceive, you can achieve. Once you get it put up here, it's going to just make, it's going to go, you're going to have an epiphany and you're going to go, that Michael is a genius. <laughs> I say that every day of my life. No, you don't. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Hey Matt, say hi to your friendly customers in Reno. Hi. <laughs> he really knows how to sell himself. Hello customers in Reno. Zero, zero, we are gonna help you resolve some wildlife issues today.
the reason why we have to trap these beavers in this type of environment is one, they don't belong here. Two, they destroy fruit trees, ornamental trees, and private property. They will chew fences, they will chew decks, they'll kill trees, and then they destroy the, the shoreline of these ponds. These are man-made ponds, and these ponds were made here by men for men, not for beavers, and so the beavers have to go. However, we do recycle, reuse, and every beaver that we capture out of here is put to very good use. When we trap all the beavers out, like the beavers, you see this place right here where they've chewed all the understory down, the brush? Oh, wow, yeah. Um, but what's gonna happen when we, when we get all the beavers out, there's gonna be nothing to chew this down, and so people have to manually cut all this stuff out. Ooh, golf ball. So this is a typical beaver Oh wow, um, that is huge. Yeah, I told you, they're really big. You can like crawl inside of them. And so here's the beaver lodge right here. And if you look, you see how there's these really deep channels? So what happens, and also this is how duck hunters die, if you didn't know, all right? The water right here is 12 inches deep, but the water right there in that beaver ditch is six foot deep. And so what happens is they're walking along the duck hunters don't know they're in their waders they they step in that and the water goes all the way down and fills their waders and sucks them under and drowns them Yikes. like that's a thing so you're telling me that a beaver sliced all of these yeah look here i mean it looks like someone come took here look at this look right here this is a chew so he started at the bottom he chewed he chewed he chewed, chewed, he chewed, 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 he chewed, chewed, then he chewed this way and it fell over. Yeah, I mean, I can definitely see the teeth now, but they... they oh, and look at here. Where this hole's from. Hedges. Dude, look at this. Beaver poop. Oh, looks wow. like, looks just like sawdust when it's expanded. Is it warm? What does it taste like? Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't want that. It's kind of, um, <laughs> it's like acorns. Disgusting. <laughs> this is the beaver den the inside of it. I'm just touching base with my uh, gym because they think I need a personal trainer. But I'm saying, man, look at this. I've been doing pretty good on my own. Maybe you should just see what they have to say. Not that you need it. People will do baited trapping for beavers. That's usually a snare set. So I don't, I've never done snares, but the basic understanding is you build up this mound and you put beaver caster in it, which is a natural occurring um, thing that beavers have. They use it to mark their territory, and it's this like thick, dark brown, pasty stuff. And when you're when you're skinning a beaver, you can actually see them. They're these two sacks, and people save those. And uh, they used to use it to make vanilla, like vanilla ice cream. Uh, that's what they used to make to like make the flavor vanilla. Is beaver caster was one of the ingredients. They use it for perfume, I think, sometimes too. Just like skunk essence, there's usually skunk essence in most perfumes. So you build the caster mound and then you put, you can buy caster or if you harvest it yourself, you, you can have some that you put on this mound and then there's a snare set there. And I don't like them as much because what the snare set does is the snare pulls them under water and just drowns them. These kill them too, but if it's set good, um, and I've gotten pretty good at it, it, when it snaps, it just, breaks their cervical spine they die right away compared to you know drowning in a snare set most people are afraid of traps they are they're, they're they're deathly afraid of traps but you don't have to be because unless you're a beaver and you get yourself all the way in this trap this trap really doesn't hurt that bad like see i can take my hand and stick it in here like this and see doesn't hurt <laughs> the safety's on it Shh, don't say that part you don't want people sticking their hands in their traps. <laughs> I just want them to know that it doesn't hurt. You do not want to mess with these traps. They will hurt you. As a matter of fact, we had a customer get one of these on their leg and they had to call the fire department to come in and cut it off of them. True fact. By the way, that customer, uh, Chris Starr is the only person, the only technician that works for Wildlife Command Center that has ever caught an 87 year old woman. Way to go, Chris. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the beaver takes these sticks right here, chews them off down there, and then he chews off each one of these little um, 
branches, okay? And then fresh chewed beaver stick, they only eat the thin layer of bark because that's where all the nutrition is. The wood has little nutrition. They do eat wood, but it's not very nutritious. They're, if you cut open their stomach, the stomach content looks like saw, sawdust. But they, they chew off all of the bark off the edges. And, and so the sticks look like this and they're still green. And when the wind blows it to the other side of the lake, you can find these all over the place. Cause if there's a beaver in here, there's going to be some of this fresh. One of the reasons the beavers have such a difficult time with this is because this soil does not compact. And so it's very, very silty, sandy. And so they dig in, but this stuff just collapses on them. Like Back home in Louisiana, the soil where they dig into is usually like clay and hard. And so they make these big mammoth caverns underneath there that you can literally crawl inside. But over here, this, this soil is so sandy and loose that it collapses on the beavers. And that's why their dens are not staying in place, staying intact. Because this is not a place for beavers. Sorry, beavers, you have to go. I'm good with that. I mean, how long does it take a beaver to do all of this? Two nights. Are you serious? Beavers are relentless, tenacious builders and perfect engineers. They are the engineers of the natural world. They can dig in and build a den all in one night. And then they'll come back, dig it in deeper, pile it up taller, and in two days you've got a full den. And then you've got angry customers that own the property. Can you see that little knoll over there where that guy's standing teeing off over there? So right behind there, there's a whole bunch of poplar tree. And so the beavers are crossing all of this and they're going over there, they're cutting the trees, they're dragging it across the, the, the greens and getting into here. That's where these bigger trees are coming from. Beavers are super strong too. As a matter of fact, one time there was a beaver out in the middle of a golf course, like just lumbering around. And I said, like, I'm gonna go barehanded. So trying to show off for the property manager, I go out there and I grab him by the tail. And when they have traction, he just pulled me flat like that and just like started dragging me along the grass. And I was like getting up, trying to dig my heels in. I couldn't stop him. I could not stop that beaver. I looked kind of silly. This is muskrat in here. Muskrat love to eat reed. Um, they will eat um, other things. They love to eat wild rose because it's rich in vitamin C. Um, but you can tell that this is all muskrat through here because they're eating the reeds. Beavers will eat reeds, but they pull the whole tubular out of the mud. Hi, I'm Michael. Hey, um, I've got my videographer here. We wanted to video the, the mounds and okay. do a training program on it. Just want to make sure it's okay with you. Yeah. Well, the difference is, so they do, so moles and gophers do make similar uh, thing, but gophers are very, very fine dirt and moles are very, very coarse dirt. So if I was just to look at that, I would say that's a mole. And then if I was to look at this, I would say, that's a mole too. But I don't know what, this, what the dirt is. So one thing about gophers is there's always a kidney shape push out. Because what happens with gophers is they make a line and then they push the dirt out this way. And when they push it out, it goes in out different directions. So like there'll be an underground tunnel and you'll have a push out here and then they're you'll see where they'll, they'll do like this. There'll be a little spot where they've done like that. Gopher trap doesn't work for a mole? Well, so two reasons. One, gophers are vegetarians and they're rodents. Moles are insectivores and they're in a completely different species of classification. They're not rodents. Gophers excavate and so they make profound travel tunnels on the ground and they have claws that go in front like this and so they kick out all the dirt 
and excavate it out into the open so that the tunnels are open. Moles practically swim through the dirt and they push the dirt to the side and when they go vertical, they kick the dirt out behind them. Okay, that's why it's really coarse and rough because it's big chunks being kicked out behind them. Those tunnels over there are really, really deep underground tunnels. And these over here are very, very shallow. So if I was trapping in this area right here, um, this area right here is where I would trap because the mole is living underneath that tree. So the, so the, mo the tree, so you look at the branches and that's what the roots look like. The mole lives right underneath the center of this tree, underneath the roots where it's always the same humidity, it's always the same temperature, and it never gets wet. And so that's where the mole nest is. And from here, he goes out that way, he goes out that way, he goes out that way. You can see it very clearly if you stand right here. He comes out from underneath the roots, and he goes down that way, and he hunts worms, and then he comes back. And so this is the best, the best run to trap him in. There's two types of, of tunnels that moles make one is them chasing worms and it's erratic wherever the worm goes that's where the mole goes he's pushing the dirt out of his way the other is a travel tunnel that's fairly straight because he's getting from point a to point b and those are the tunnels you can catch them in because they go in those twice when they're feeding they don't go in those tunnels ever again. Once they, catch the, once they catch the worm, they never go in there again. That's why homeowners have a difficult time catching moles because they trap where they see the tunnels, but they don't know the difference between a travel tunnel and a feeding tunnel, and they'll never go through a feeding tunnel twice. There's two things that gophers hate. What are they? People and um, dogs. That's right, gopher snakes <laughs> and oxygen. The two things that gophers hate, gopher snakes and oxygen. So you probe, find the tunnel, you dig a hole, a round hole. I got you a special shovel for digging around holes, right? You take the plug of earth out and then there'll be two tunnels in there. You put one trap going that way, put the other trap going this way. You leave it open. And when the gophers sense oxygen, they hate fresh oxygen. They rush to the tunnel because they want to barricade it so the gopher snakes can't get in and they get caught in the traps. Let me show you these traps so that you'll have them. What would we do without Michael? Um, uh, watch YouTube like Michael did 10 years ago. I'd probably have a better job. <laughs> <laughs> these are Victor Gopher traps and they're not the very best on the market, but they are a very good trap. Um, these are locally available at most tractor supplies and so a consumer can buy these, no problem. The best, the best gopher traps on the market are, are a stainless steel trap made by Steve Albano. And they're called the Gophinator. But these traps will work too. These, these, these work pretty good. You cut a plug and you pull all the earth out. And the tunnel's down usually in the, in, the, in the plug. And you put this in and you have to put it all the way in. That's why you got to push your thumb against this. Mm -hmm. And you smash it all the way in until this is even with the end of the tunnel. Okay, and then when you let go, it'll pop back up like that. And when the gopher comes along, he'll crawl over the top of this and then he'll push this and he'll snap and catch him. Hmm. And, and so it catches him in the middle of the body and these puncture his lungs. Gotcha. Cool. So just remember that this doesn't go over the top this way. This goes under the bottom this way. I want to give a big shout out to Matt. He's our territory manager in Reno. He does an incredible job. When we think about our catchphrase, we can catch it, well, Matt can catch it. He's been doing a great job in this territory for a couple of years now, and way to go, Matt. So well that we didn't have any beavers to film. No beavers. Although, as soon as we left, he was catching beavers left and right. Oh, was he? Yeah. I didn't get that update. Yeah, yeah. He caught a couple of beavers. He was having to use live traps on a different project, but he, he did a good job. Raise the energy drink of gods. When you can't put an organic plug in, so you just have to mercifully put one in at the end of the video? You just throw it in there. This is Donatello. Okay. This is Leonardo. 
And then Master Splinter's got to be a turtle, I guess, then, in this? Yep, Master Splinter's a turtle. Drink your rays. Come on, drink all of it. Make it big and strong. Oh, there you go. Make you big and strong. <laughs> and I got to tell you, Nevada is incredible. It's beautiful. And it's a wildlife control operator's paradise because you have everything there. You've got pigeons and rats. You've got rattlesnakes. You've got beavers. Everything that we typically go after, including bats. Stay tuned for next time because when we visit Reno next, it's going to be rattlesnake season. And that's going to be exciting. Thanks for 10,000 subscribers. That is a monumental milestone and I am so appreciative. Now make sure you turn on that bell notification. Leave me a comment down below. I love to answer comments. It is kind of creepy. You're like a comment stalker. I know, that's right. Like as soon as the comments listed, my belt, my phone goes bing. Ha <laughs> ha.